Hi there. Now in today's video, I'm going to talk about the top reasons for a visa getting rejected at, uh, let's say, the interview stage. Uh, now, uh, this is like a follow-up video. In you know, in my last video, I did speak about you know what are the requirements to get a Canadian visa, uh, uh, the documents, the eligibility criteria, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, we, I thought we also need to understand what are the big reasons why visa applications typically get rejected, right? Uh, now picture this scenario, you walk into a visa uh, interview, you you know, uh, respond to all the questions asked of you, you feel good about what you've said, uh, and, and then you come back home, wait for the visa to arrive, and, and lo and behold comes the news that, well, your visa has gotten rejected, right? Uh, and, and then at that point in time, you probably have no clue why that you know, came to being. Uh, so, so it's always better, I feel, uh, you know, to be prepared, right, to understand what exactly does a visa interview look for and well what are the big reasons why your application could be rejected and, and so this is the subject of the next two videos in this two-part series i'm going to talk about the major reasons why visas get rejected and what you can do to ensure that such a scenario doesn't play out for your uh, for your particular case uh well let's get started uh, the the first reason uh you know that visas typically get rejected are the intention of the candidate to stay back in the host country, right? Now, most visa officers will be very, very careful in assessing this fact. Uh, what is your purpose of going to that country? Is your intention to continue to live in the country, in that country, in let's say Canada or US or whichever other country you're, uh, you know, visiting for education, right? Uh, so so they, they very clearly try to ascertain uh, whether you're a candidate who's looking to study and then come back to your host country, to your own country, or is your intention to actually settle down and to become an immigrant, right? Uh, now, now, the thing is that you need to be convincing in your communication, right? You need to be very, very clear that your intention is definitely not to settle down, is definitely not to stay back. Uh, it's actually to come back to your own country, right? And And the, the thing about being convincing is that you need to say the right things. You need to be, you know, clear with specifics about your plan, right? Now, that means that, uh, you know, you need to have a proper story that you're going to tell them, right? About, well, it could be on the lines of, well, I have uh, always dreamt of working with XYZ company in, in XYZ sector. Uh, and, and that's the plan that I've always had. And 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 this, you know, program that I'm studying in in, in your country, uh, will actually help me acquire the skills uh, that will help me land that job, right? But the intention was always to work with, uh, you know, that particular campus back in my country, right? Or, or alternatively, you could basically tell them about your family condition, right? How you have maybe parents that need uh, to be taken care of in in their old age. Maybe you have, you know, friends and families uh, that that you've always grown up with that you share a very very strong bond with. Uh, you know, and and where maybe you want to start your own business back in your home country because opportunities there, uh, you know, are very very promising for a you know candidate such as yourself, right? And so so essentially, what I'm trying to say is find your story, something that resonates with your background and your context. Uh, but make sure that you think about that deeply when you walk into a visa interview because what can make it convincing is how much thought you've given to it. Uh, and how many, how many specifics you can present to the visa officer. Remember, being silent is not the smart way out. You need to be communicative. You need to, uh, you know, tell the visa officer about your exact plans and, and underscore the point that, hey, I'm not here, you know, I'm not coming to your country to settle down. I'm not coming there to immigrate. I'm actually, you know, looking to study, gain, you know, the required skills and come back uh, to my own country, right? So so that plans uh, that plan needs to be very clearly communicated. So this was uh, the first reason why visas typically get rejected, right? Um, the, the second reason uh, is something that people sometimes overlook. And this is, you know, to show adequate funding, right? Now, uh, a very easy way that a visa officer ascertains your intention to stay back is if he or she finds that your, uh, you know, documentations do not show adequate, you know, available funding. For somebody who's coming in to, to study in a foreign country without the necessary funds, remember, it's not just about showing, you know, assets. It's it's showing them 
in a liquid form, right? In your ability to liquidate those assets is crucial, right? You could you could maybe uh, home uh, own a home or a or a, or own property, commercial or residential property worth crores, uh, but well, that's not going to be you know easy to liquidate, right? That depends on many many conditions. But contrast that, you know, with money that you could have in your bank account in the form of fixed deposits, in the form of you know stocks and shares. Uh, or mutual funds and and these are you know these are assets that can be liquidated as and when your the need for uh, need to do so comes up right so so the preference is always to show uh, you know uh, adequate funding in the form of liquid assets uh, well most people get confused on this regard right that well i need to show liquid assets to the tune of my entire duration of study right if, if it's if you're studying for a four year program and uh, well, uh, the cost of that program plus living expenses works out to about, you know, one and a half crores, then then that doesn't mean you need to show one and a half crores or so uh, in entirely liquid assets, because that's not the requirement. The, you know, the visa officer will ascertain, are you prepared for the next year or so, right, in terms of the funds required? Do you have them uh, in a liquid form in your bank account or in your related, you know, uh, financial, uh, you know, uh, accounts that you have? Uh, any scholarships that you could have, any you know student loans that uh, you you have an, uh, that you have approved from from banking institutions back in India or or otherwise, well, those uh, obviously go a long way in convincing this with the visa officer. But uh, but but the idea is that all of this put together should cover you for a minimum of you know one plus year, right? And and account for both stay uh, and uh, you know living costs as well as tuition, right? So so make sure. Uh, that that do your research on this. Do speak to the concerned embassy or or a, a visa consultant in this regard because uh, you know rules might vary depending on time of year and 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 well things things change all the time things are fluid all the time so make sure that you get specific information about this. But but I think this uh, you know what I just told you holds true in a in a general sense. Uh, the third reason uh, that visa. Uh, you know, rejections happen uh, is that, well, people end up falsifying documents, right? Now, uh, your, uh, there was a report, I think, early this year in about March 2023, where, uh, you know, this, this report came out in popular, you know, newspapers and publications like the BBC, Hindu, uh, Indian Express, and so on and so forth. And, and what this said is that there was evidence for over 500 students of Indian origin uh, that they received you know, deportation letters from uh, the, the Canada Border Security uh, Agency. And, and when they were asked to, uh, well, when they were asked to be deported, right, they were at least informed that they would be deported uh, because of forged documents that they submitted at the visa time, right? Now, now this obviously is super bad news if you're a student in Canada and you, uh, well, when you find out that, uh, you know, your consultant, uh, maybe you didn't intend to, you know, cheat or forge documents, but your, uh, you know, consultant did or, or uh, well, I think you need to be careful, I think is the bottom line, right? Don't forge documents, don't submit false documents, because even if you do pass the visa interview uh, and, and you get a visa, there is a high chance that once even you are, when you're staying back, when you're studying in that particular country, that they will catch up to, you know, your forgery, right? Uh, it's a, it's a, it's really a very distasteful sort of exit from uh, not just your stay in the country, but your, you know, career aspirations, right? So, so I think betting all of that on a forced document is not really a smart way to go about. Uh, make sure that all your documents are original. Make sure that you take the process seriously, understand all the requirements and fulfill them. Uh, if it takes, you know, a little more time, so be it. But make sure that you fulfill the eligibility criteria without having to resort to such means, right? Uh, well, if you like what I said in this video, do give me a thumbs up, do like this video, do share this video in your circles. Uh, our services, uh, you know, span the entire gamut of your admission journey, starting from, you know, preparing you for standardized tests, helping you identify geographies and universities, you know, that suit your background, your academic background, your aspirations, your dreams, uh, as well as your standardized test scores. Uh, and finally, you know, we put all of this in the, into a strong application uh, with, with, you know, 
covering these thoughts in a powerful manner in your SOP and your recommendation letters, uh, and, and also handhold you with you know uh, with tackling assessments, online assessments, personal interviews, and whatnot. Right, and, and we're able to do all of this because we've got a vast network of mentors from diverse backgrounds. You know, people who studied different courses, worked with different places, uh, and and most of these uh, have gone on to study in your you know, in universities that you covered, maybe even, uh, you know, passed out from there and, and moved on to uh, successful jobs, right? So their experience will be invaluable in you making the right choices. And, and that's something that we believe in. And that's something that we incorporate in our processes. Uh, so, so do give me a shout if you feel uh, that you need some assistance from us, you need some queries to be answered by our experts. Uh, the link to contact us is given in the description for this video. I hope to hear from you soon. Uh, uh, until then, I wish you all the very best. Do watch the next video because uh, I'm going to give you a few more details specific to, you know, your application and, and not as general as the one that I talked about in this video, right? So do watch out for that. Thank you. Wish you all the very best and uh, see you in my next video.